Hey guys, welcome back. This is episode 30 of Real Estate Investing in New York with me, Christina Kremitas. And in this episode, we are talking about how to find the perfect investment property. So stay tuned, we're covering everything here. Welcome back, guys. This is an episode that a lot of people have been asking for, and it is finally, finally here. Thanks for tuning in today. We are going to be talking about exactly how to identify the perfect investment property. This is more work, I think, than it seems. I think you're going to be surprised in terms of exactly what goes into identifying the perfect investment property, but they are out there. And I'm going to show you exactly what to look for and exactly how to analyze what you want to find in an investment property. And of course, there are so many buildings in New York between Manhattan and Brooklyn that this is really going to cover. Um, you might find like later down the road as you find a property and learn more about the building, you might learn things about the building during the due diligence phase that you don't love, which will affect whether it actually is the perfect investment property. But for right now, we are going to be covering what you want to search for to at least find the listings that would be ideal. And then of course, what will follow is going to view the property, actually seeing it in person, deciding if you like it, and then proceeding with due diligence. So right now we are scratching the surface in terms of how to search for the property and identify the listings that you want to go look at. Something very important that you want to keep in mind when it comes to real estate investing in general and looking for an investment property is the concept that real estate investing is a long-term strategy for building wealth. You do not want to purchase an investment property if you only intend to hold on to it for five years. This is really something that requires upfront investment, requires some money in order to advertise your apartment, close on the apartment, um, there are there are upfront costs until you become like a well-oiled machine with respect to rentals. You don't want to have the idea that you are going to flip this property and and make so much money in a few years. Unless you are someone that is fixing and flipping, like buying dilapidated properties, putting your own work into it and flipping, that is a completely different concept than what we're talking about here. So you have to go into this with the understanding that you want to hold on to this property for at least seven years. I think that's kind of like the general rule of thumb in terms of you, after seven years, there's a good chance that between appreciation, increasing in price in the market, you can probably sell that property and make up your closing costs that you paid when you bought it, the closing costs you'll pay when you sell it, and any like miscellaneous expenses that you incurred along the way of ownership. But again, it's not going to be like a huge profit. So the benefit of owning investment property long term is an income, is an, it's an additional income source. And this income source is something that your cost is going to be the same pretty much for your entire ownership between now and 30 years from now with the exception of slight increases in monthly carrying cost fees, you know, just maybe taxes might increase in accordance with typical inflation and things like that. But the benefit of the long-term investment property is that the rent is increasing year over year. However often you increase the rent, you are making more money each year on it. So the first few years of owning your investment property might not be the most profitable, but the idea is long-term, keeping in mind that that is really important here. Something huge to keep in mind when you are searching on websites for your potential investment property is that this all has to do with the monthly carrying costs of the property. What is your monthly obligation going to be to own this property? And that is what is going to be your main driver of consideration in terms of is this property a good investment? A low asking price is not the main driver of whether this is a good idea because there are a lot 
lot of properties, again, in New York and Brooklyn that have very low pricing, but the reason for the very low pricing is that they have very high monthlies, whether it be maintenance or taxes. And as those fees increase, the value of the property decreases. So you might see an investment property, not an investment property, but you may see a property listed for $500,000 that looks like a great deal. And then you find out that the maintenance is $4,000 a month, which obviously would be bad given, you know, based on the size of the apartment you're looking at respectively, but that is not what you're looking for. Really, you're looking for low monthlies here, not necessarily a low asking price. Mm -hmm. There are two main things that affect the monthly carrying costs for your investment property and any property for that matter. First is your monthly mortgage payment. Your monthly mortgage payment is determined by how much money you're putting down, essentially how much you're actually financing on the property, so the size of your mortgage, and your interest rate. So the more money you take out on your mortgage, obviously the higher your payment is gonna be, and the higher your interest rate, again, obviously the higher your payment is going to be. So this doesn't have anything to do with the property that you choose. This just has to do with your personal financial situation. So you do want to figure out how much money do you have to put down, what you are able to finance. So getting a pre-approval from a mortgage lender would be the proper first step here. Identify how much money a month you can afford to put towards this, uh, this full apartment cost. Um, so the mortgage price is one of those things. The other thing that you are going to be looking for that contributes to the monthly cost of the apartment is obviously the apartment's carrying costs. So that includes your maintenance in a co-op or common charges in a condo and the property tax, which is only, uh, which is only applicable in the condo. So those charges vary greatly from building to building. So you would be surprised to find that neighboring buildings right next to each other in the same neighborhood might have very, very different monthly costs. There is another episode in this podcast that talks about monthly costs. It's one of the first few episodes actually um, in the podcast if you wanna go back to that. But the maintenance in a building and the common charges really is dependent on the building's financials. Every single building runs itself like a business. So they have different operating costs, they pay different things for their handymen, their supers, their garbage disposal, their bills for the building based on size, based on many different things, changes how much money the maintenance is in that particular building. So it is something that's one of the most important things you want to look for when identifying your investment property. In an upcoming episode that is going to be released in a couple of weeks, I'll keep you guys posted on my Instagram with the updates on when it's going to go live. We do have a mortgage loan offer are joining us for an episode that'll be in I think two probably two or three episodes from now so um, we will go over more details on the mortgage and really what affects the mortgage rate and what affects the mortgage payment so stay tuned for that episode as well so now getting to the apartment search which is the fun part that's what everyone wants to get to the first thing you are going to do is identify the neighborhoods where you would want to consider investing. These are going to be neighborhoods that have a strong rental market and also affordable pricing. So there are certain neighborhoods that I don't love as much for buying an investment property because the neighborhoods are already very, very expensive. But the thing to note about those neighborhoods is that the rents are also comparatively very expensive. So it depends on your budget. And I'm going to do another episode as well about identifying these neighborhoods. But episode 22 would be an excellent one to listen to because in that episode, I talk about my top five neighborhoods to invest in now. And even though that episode went live last year, it's still applicable. So all the neighborhoods that I mentioned in that prior episode are still very strong neighborhoods right now in terms of appreciation trajectory. So I definitely recommend listening to that episode if you want to kickstart your idea for the neighborhoods you want to focus on when looking for an investment property. The neighborhoods that I mentioned in that episode covered Manhattan as well as Brooklyn. When it comes to identifying the monthly payment and what you are able to handle monthly payment wise, if you have not gotten a pre-approval letter from a lender yet, I do recommend, like I said before, that that be your first step. But in the meantime, 
If you haven't done that yet, you can use a mortgage calculator that you can find online. So there are many different mortgage calculators. I think Zillow has one. There are many random websites and apps as well that you can download to your phone that will help you calculate your mortgage payment. So if you type in the property price, you type in what you're going to put down and you you can type and it'll show you your mortgage total amount and then it'll break out for you based on the interest rate what your payments are looking like they're going to be. Again, getting this from your lender is going to be the best bet for you because you'll have a current accurate in, uh, interest rate and you'll have just more accurate numbers overall. But this is good to use in the near term if you just want to like hit the websites and start searching and you don't have any idea what the monthly mortgage payment looks like yet. So that's the first thing you'll want to do is write down that number. So what is the mortgage payment that you are going to commit to paying monthly? And keep in mind that you still also have the maintenance and taxes to pay for. So this m number cannot be your max. It has to be maybe 50% of your of what you can pay. Um, so that's, so jot down that number and that is a number that we are going to keep in the works as we're doing this calculation. So what you're going to do is you're going to use a website called streeteasy.com. You can use Zillow, you can use real estate agent websites, but to be honest with you, um, streeteasy.com has a pretty streamlined way of searching inventory. The one thing to mention about all of these websites, whether you're using StreetEasy or Zillow or Trulia or Realtor.com, all of these websites are tools that you can use to see an example of the inventory that is available. It doesn't, these websites will not have every bit of inventory that's available. Um, not everything available is searchable. And the other thing about these websites is that if you do see a listing that you like that looks good to you, if you inquire on these websites, it's actually very difficult to get through to the agent that is representing the seller or the seller themselves. So if you see something that looks good and you inquire that you want to see it, you are likely not going to be able to get through directly to the seller side. You might get sent to like a buyer's agent or a third party like that to help facilitate you getting your representation in the transaction. The reason why I mention this is because you searching for listings as an investment property really should be done in tandem with your buyer's agent or your representation in the transaction so that you can have somebody to consult with on these properties and so that when you identify properties that you like that look good to you, you can send that list to your real estate broker who is representing you in the transaction and that person can get through for you much more easily easily directly to the sellers of the property to schedule time for you to view them or get any particular questions answered. That's really the best way that I go that I recommend you go about doing this. Um, so if you don't have your buyer's agent yet, just send me an email or reach out to me. I'm happy to help you with it. But you definitely want to be doing this in collaboration with your broker. Okay, so let's say that you are ready for the search. So you're gonna head to streeteasy.com and you are going to type in sales, go to sales and type in the neighborhoods that you've identified that you want to conduct your search in. And then you are going to click on the size of the apartment that you want. When it comes to ideal investment properties, you want something that's going to rent out easily and quickly with the least headache. That's really something important to note. For that reason, I like studios and one bedrooms if you're looking at rental properties. The reason for this is because it's always easier to rent your apartment out to a small number of people instead of, let's say you have a two bedroom or a three bedroom, you're looking for a group of people now to rent the apartment. So you're hoping that everybody stays together. If they're roommates, you want them to stay friends. If, and you're checking multiple people's credit, you are hoping that no one defaults on the apartment. You're really depending on a unit to keep those people in place. Whereas a studio or a one bedroom, you have a much higher likelihood that you're only gonna need to be bothering with one person or two people 
and you there there's more personal responsibility for carrying the apartment when it comes to your tenant and it's usually much easier for you when it comes to the dynamic and getting that rented out easily so i recommend studios and one bedrooms if you're looking for investment properties they're also priced lower and for that reason they have lower carrying costs and it's easier to rent them out and you know do your best to cover the monthly carrying costs. Next is the budget amount that you want to search up to. Again, this process depends on your monthly payment more than anything else, but of course, depending on what you have saved, your down payment isn't unlimited. So based on what you have saved that you're able to put in a down payment, assume that unless you are trying to put down anything more than 20%, use that as your gauge for budget. So if you have $100,000 saved, let's say, um, your budget would go up to a million, for example. So that's like a loose guideline. If you know you wanna put 50% down and you have $100,000 saved, then you would be looking for apartments up to $200,000. Um, you're probably not gonna find anything for $200,000, but that's just the example of how you would do this. So like loosely determine your budget and you can set it for now. And I usually like to estimate a little bit on the high side when it comes to selecting a budget, just in case you don't wanna miss anything. You don't wanna miss anything that's priced like maybe just above your budget because maybe it can be negotiated on. So search a loose budget, give yourself some wiggle room. And then another important thing that you want to filter when it comes to setting your search is condos versus co-ops. So I do not recommend co-ops for investment properties, especially when you're going into this knowing that you intend to use the property as an investment property. Co-ops are very restrictive when it comes to subletting rules and very often will charge you a significant fee or limit completely you being allowed to sublet the apartment. So that said, I definitely recommend selecting only condos or houses when it comes to this search. So you could search houses, you could search multifamily, you can search townhouse, and you can search condo. But definitely make sure that co-op is not checked when you are running this search. So now you click search and you run your search and you scroll and start to look at things that look appealing to you. When you click on a property on a listing that looks nice, maybe based on the photo or something that you like about it, you click on the listing and you are going to see the breakout of the pricing and the numbers on that listing. You're going to see the monthly common charges. You are going to see the monthly taxes. And then Street Easy will also give you an estimated payment amount that will auto fill itself into the listing that you're looking at. This is a good tool just for a shortcut to use. And it's an estimate, but it's not a bad estimate. So you want to actually click on that estimated payment number, you'll see that it's a little bit highlighted. It looks like a clickable link and there's a little calculator icon next to it. Click on that estimated payment tool and a box will come up. And when you click on that box, I'm looking at it on my computer right now, you are going to be able to fill in the specifics that match what you are doing. So you wanna make sure that the down payment amount is correct. So if it's auto-filled to a certain number, sometimes it auto-fills to 10% or 50%. You wanna make sure that if you're putting down 20%, this down payment number says the right amount for 20% down so that the rest of your numbers work out. And you want to also make sure that you're putting in the correct interest rate. Now, keep in mind that your interest rate for an investment property is going to be higher than the typical in interest rate that you've been hearing circulating around the media. So let's say the typical, the interest rate right now for a normal mortgage, let's say you've been hearing on the news that it's 3.8 or 4%. As an investment property, your percentage of interest is going to be higher. Your interest rate is going to be higher. So just keep that in mind too, which is why I recommend getting the pre-approval letter. So you're going to put in your interest rate there. And once you fill in the interest rate, if you're doing a 30-year fixed mortgage, you can also select that. And it, this tool on StreetEasy will generate for you 
your estimated monthly payment for this apartment. So this is how you're going to see if this apartment is feasible for you. Is this monthly payment doable for you for the type of investment that you're looking for? If it is, you are going to jot this listing down as one that you're interested in. And this is how you're going to see if it's going to work for you. So once you do that with several properties, you're going to jot down all of the ones that look good to you. So anything that looks like the monthly payment comes to a number that you're comfortable with, you're going to write those properties down. And now we go to step two, which is making sure that you will be able to rent that property out for a price that will come close to covering that monthly payment. So usually you'll have somewhat of an idea or if you've been working with a broker especially, you'll have an, a basic understanding of around how much money you can rent out a studio or one bedroom for in your areas of interest because that amount will change based on where you're looking in what neighborhood. But what will affect it even more so is the building itself. So even within certain neighborhoods, a studio in one building, maybe that doesn't have amenities, or a building that is more bare bones and basic, is going to rent out for much cheaper than a studio in a luxury building with a full-time doorman and a pool and every amenity you could ever want. And as much as we want to feel like we know everything, there are so many buildings in New York and Brooklyn, Manhattan in general, that you might not know just from the address of the listing what the features of the building are and exactly what those apartments rent out for. So now you do the second phase of your research. So for every single apartment that you wrote down as a possibility when you were doing your search, you are now going to go back into the Street Easy tool and you are going to directly type in the building address. So you're gonna go listing by listing of your listings of interest, type in the building address. And I'm also going to do this on my computer with you right now so I know that I'm doing the exact correct steps. So I am just entering in a building as an example and I see the building pop up in the search results. So I am going to click on the building once I find it and I'm going to scroll down. So I'm going to pass all of the general building information and I'm going to go to the section on Street Easy's website that says units. And now we are looking at every unit that is currently on the market in the building. What we are going to do is click over to past rentals. And now this website is going to generate for you all of the past rentals that have ever occurred in this building that the public records are aware of or apartments that were advertised. There are other data sources that we use. Uh, just keep in mind that this is targeted to the typical consumer who doesn't have access to real estate agents, databases, or any of our other tools that we pay to use. Um, this is a free tool. So you're getting decent information. You'll, you'll be able to get a pretty accurate estimate here. Um, so that's why we're only, obviously, I'm only showing you these tools right now. So you're going to go to past rentals. And you are going to scroll down. And you can see all the past rentals that have occurred in the building for the most part. And you are going to look at the similar rental. So you're going to look at square footage size and the line of the building. So if the apartment that you were interested in was on the six line or the A line, then you're going to want to go down and specifically look at the lines that say six or A in the unit number because that's likely going to be a similar floor plan. Usually in buildings from, you know, top to bottom, they tend to be similar layouts unless they, you know, they can change, but typically they're similar. So you want to make sure that you have a similar layout that you're looking at and similar square footage for the apartment. So you want to click on the listings under recent rentals that look like your listing of interest. And you want to see what that apartment rents it out for. So you'll want to click on the listing. You'll want to really make sure, like if the listing that you selected that was of interest to you is renovated, then you want to make sure that the rental listing you click on to compare it to is also a renovated one. So this is a fair amount of analysis here, honestly. You're gonna be clicking through these listings to really find the ones that were similar that rented within this building that are similar to yours and what they rented out for. And that's gonna be your indicator of what you could probably charge for rent for your current apartment. 
Keep in mind seasonality. So apartments rent out at different prices during different times of the year. So if you see rental listings that rented in let's say August and September, that's the most expensive time for rentals in New York City. So if you have an idea that if you buy an apartment at this rate, you know, let's say you're gonna be closing in February or closing in March, those are not very active rental markets, typically. So you wanna just keep in mind that when you look at these numbers, you don't want to, you wanna look at them from a conservative point of view. So okay, this rented out for $4,000. I'm not gonna assume that I can rent mine out for 5,000. You know, maybe we could try to get, to get a little bit more, um, but you might get 3,900, you know, based on seasonality. So keep that in mind when you're looking. But really you just wanna find the similar rental units and that is a decent indicator of what you can rent your listing of interest out for. Now, if it's a very small building that you're looking in, there might not be many comparables or rentals happening within the building. And that will require you to look into neighboring buildings that are similar and look at those rentals as well. That's why you work with an agent because this is a lot of work and it's something that you usually want to just truly like offload onto your agent and let your agent use their expertise and um, time during their day because this is their job to like crunch these numbers for you and present you with apartments and you know what they're going to cost what they're going to rent out for and it's just a much easier way to do it. But if you really want to understand, first of all, the nitty gritty of what your agent is doing for you, then this is definitely, you know, it was great for you to listen to. And if you want to try to do it yourself as well or work in collaboration with your agent to identify properties, then this is exactly how you do it. The last piece of information and note that I'll leave you with before wrapping up this episode is that you might actually be dismayed to find out that as you're looking at these recent comparable rentals and you know looking at what your potential apartment could rent out for it's very very rare that you are going to find an apartment in new york whether it's manhattan or brooklyn where your monthly payment is going to be much lower than the price you can rent it out for today and that's just the way the market is structured. It's just the way the market is priced. So if you buy an apartment today, you might just break even in terms of what you can collect in rent. You might even be a little bit in the red in terms of maybe you can't collect the full amount in rent right now that you're paying out of pocket. So that's just something to keep in mind is that a lot of people when they're setting out looking for investment properties, they want something that's going to be very, very, very profitable now. And it does take a little bit of time to get that profit out of it. It will happen. It will come. But it does take some time. So just as an example, a property that I purchased as an investment in Lower Manhattan in 2014, when I purchased it, I was not um, breaking even in the monthly payments. Um, but I held onto the property for several years. I still have the property and I was in the green after a few years. And then COVID hit actually and rents went down again for a short period of time. So the tenant that I rented out my property to was then, it put me back in the red and slowly we're getting back into the green. So real estate can be finicky like that. It can go up, it can go down, it's market dependent. But overall, the value of finding your investment property is the fact that you put down your down payment and then the rest of the property is paid off by your tenant. It's really a beautiful way to build equity and build wealth and offer someone a home in the process. So I truly believe in the rental property process and the strategy for investing in rental properties. Personally, I love investing in rental properties and I look to purchase an investment property as much as I can. So if I create a down payment savings, I will use that for the next small rental property. And I just think that it's a really great way to diversify your real estate portfolio and have multiple renters contributing towards your investments so that if one rental doesn't do as well or if one renter has an issue, you can pick up the slack with, you know, you have the other ones that are still performing. So if you guys have any other questions about this topic, please always send your questions over to me. You can send your questions via email. My email address is christina.cremitas at element.com. And you can also 
message me on Instagram, message me on TikTok. My handles are here. And always never hesitate to reach out to me. You, I actually got a phone call from one of you guys the other day. You just randomly called me and you were talking about what episode was it? The sponsor sale episode. And you told me that you were, someone called me saying that they were investing in a new development and that the video was helpful for them. So I love hearing from you guys and reach out to me any way you want. I'm always here for you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope that this episode was valuable to you and stay tuned for the next one.